Hello. At the time of making this video, it is currently Asian American, Native Hawaiian, and Pacific Islander Heritage Month. We deserve to be treated well and celebrated and uplifted and people to fight with us. And so, here we are. If you want to learn about Asian burlesque history or some of the experiences that we see today with a lot of Asian burlesque experiences, I have some in the handy dandy resource list right here for you and all of the links will be down below as usual for you so you can check out those resources, buy the books, the DVDs, check out the blogs, everything that's mentioned in this video and who knows I might even add a couple sneaky extras down below as well as time goes on so please feel free to share this video and do your own research and also just hire Asian performers. Support us and uh... Yeah, let's go. And I am going to apologize in advance for some of my pronunciations with some of the names in this resource video. First up on the list is a fantastic festival which I just learned came to Canada this year which is amazing. The New York Asian Burlesque Festival. They have been going 11 years strong featuring Asian performers from across the globe bringing them to New York and this year they just leaped over to Montreal. They do have some amazing photo archives of the festival. They do so much to uplift their performers and highlight them and, and show the intersections and diversity amongst Asian performers. Next up is a book, No Bed of Roses, The Rose Chan Story. Rose Chan is a burlesque legend. It's not a typical biography. Um, it is told as in a first person point of view um, and it's really interesting to hear uh, not only some of the experiences that happened throughout Rose Chan's life but it also has dialogue that are written in like similar to scripts or it has uh, recipes that Rose Chan used to make. So there's a lot of like really interesting other extra bits in it. If you want to learn about specifically the Chinese circuits and the Chinese nightclubs, check out Forbidden City Burlesque. There is a book and there is a DVD. Both are really awesome. They go hand in hand together talking about Chinese nightclubs in the 1900s. Super powerful, neat stuff in both of them to know about. These are pieces of paper, but you can buy the book or the DVD. If you want to have a little bit of an insight as well into that, there is a blog post which is called Dreams of the Forbidden City. That gives you a little bit of an insight into Forbidden City. That's a really good starting point. And then continue down to actually watch and read the documentary. There is a very, very limited edition that was published in 2019 and they are no longer selling the book. So if you're one of the lucky few who owns a copy, there is a book called are we a joke? And it is by Kayla Tanji and Jung Yok Mi. So this was a submission based publication in 2019 that was featuring queer AAPI performers in burlesque. Some stories that some of them are willing to share about their experiences in burlesque as a queer AAPI performer. Um, and so super super cool resource to hear about. I do not own a copy unfortunately, I wish I did. Something that is out there for some of those lucky few. And speaking of publishing stories, there are a lot of blogs out in the world about burlesque and one thing that is often common among people from marginalized communities specifically is often a lot of them have blogs that talk about, it might not be focused on, but it does talk about blending identity or experiencing burlesque through their perspective with their identity, whether they're trans or Chinese or have a disability or whatever their identity is and what experiences they have. A lot of those experiences are integral to how we do burlesque and how we exist in the world outside of Borlas. And so a few people to check out is Bebe Demure, who does so, so much. They have Our Universe that they are currently working on producing coming up. They did run a Kickstarter that recently ended in supporting them to produce the show. So I'm super excited to see Our Universe come to life because Bebe does incredible work. And they have a few blog posts as well about identity that are super cool. Hannah Lee is another performer who has a blog called Lab Tech My Way Through Striptease. <laughs> Lab teched my way through striptease school. They have two blog posts in particular that are really good. One is about identity in burlesque and two is about hashtag not your Asian sidekick fantasy. And one thing that we that is important to acknowledge when we talk about Asian burlesque often 
we have a lot of people who are not Asian who blatantly copy and appropriate our cultures. As somebody who is Chinese and also part of, again, the diaspora, that is something that I am hyper aware of, is, is towing that line of, uh, with any cultural aspects I bring into my burlesque, I don't bring a whole lot of Chinese uh, influence into my burlesque, even if it's my Taltan roots into burlesque. One thing I'm very conscious about is making sure I'm not appropriating my own cultures because that is a thing that can happen. We do see a lot of people who are not of Asian descent who do pan-Asianism into their acts. It is something we still see headliners doing today and being hired for. Don't do that. I am definitely not the first person or even the right person to talk about it in a lot of circumstances. But one person who has a really important blog post is Ruby Corvette. They have a blog post specifically about culture appropriation in burlesque so I highly recommend you check that out and Ruby Corvette if you follow them on Instagram they also have some videos and posts that they've been making recently on the Lunar New Year and specifically the Chinese Zodiac some of it is based on the Zodiac and some of it is just fun if you are a showgirl rabbit <laughs> so uh, super fun blending there I highly recommend you check out Ruby Corvette there's an interview that is by another Asian burlesque performer Victoria Ling Chong they have uh, an interview with how Arachika Bamboo learned to love burlesque and the Yakuza life that is an interview when Bamboo was living in Berlin. Super neat to learn about some of their experiences in burlesque as they are a burlesque legend. Super cool to see like, their perspectives and, and what they've experienced in burlesque. And speaking about not quite a legend, but definitely Neo, Midnight Martini. Midnight Martini is our 2014 Queen of Burlesque at the Burlesque Hall of Fame. She has classes that are available online virtually on her website that is super cool. My personal favorite is her finger fan tutorial. If you wanna know what that is, Google Midnight Martini. But if you want to make your own and learn how, check out her tutorial. And also she has a tutorial on how to use them. Kobe Yi. Kobe Yi was the 2020 recipient of the Bolas Call of Fame's Living Legend Award for her contributions to the Bolas community. And so she, did a lot. Not only was she a performer, she was a costumer for many, many burlesque performers and she owned her own nightclub. Yeah, badass. The main thing I have right now is Kobe Yi and Steven are in love, which is a documentary about her. Uh, there are also many videos that I will have linked down below that talk about her life and her experiences and interviews with her in her older years. Super, super sweet sassy person. <laughs> One thing that's cool about burlesque performers is many of us exist outside of burlesque. Shocking, I know. There is a burlesque performer who has been featured on a uh, Food Network documentary style-esque uh, show. So Filipina performer Grand Muffin, check them out because they were featured in Takeout with Lisa Ling. They are specifically in episode one of season one, so kicking things off with that entire series with a good start in my opinion. <laughs> if you are in the United States, you can watch it on HBO Max. If you are in Canada, I believe it's in on Crave. Somebody else who does incredible work. Uh, they have secret projects in the works I uh, have been told. They want you to keep an eye on them. Haz Al Ghul is a phenomenal burlesque performer, advocate, badass all around babe. They do so much. Another powerhouse person in general. Follow them on social media because they will be making some big announcements on big projects. Uh, I don't know about soon, but at some point that you are going to want to know about. Other phenomenal humans who I adore to bits is Frankie Fingerling. Frankie Fingerling has It's Always About Race. They do so much work in the burlesque community, again, around accessibility and equity, and uh, It's Always About Race is a podcast that is super, super important. Every single episode has been like peak peak what we need. I've loved every single episode about it. It is a podcast that you can listen to that includes just Frankie talking about their perspectives and experiences and burlesque around race and their identity and they also do interviews and so they've interviewed some performers about 
their experiences in Borlesque and you can probably guess by the title it is focused on race in Borlesque and how people's identities again are influenced how people experience microaggressions, how people experience whitewashing in burlesque. And one thing I love about the podcast is it doesn't only talk about these are the things that happen, but it also uplifts and celebrates some of the beauty within those communities and identities as well. And it also talks about actionable steps that allies can take. Another podcast that is by another phenomenal human show my more is a burlesque performer who also has a podcast called The Pasty Tapes. Show My More's Pasty Tapes is, again, similar, interviewing all of these burlesque performers from across the globe and really, really cool conversations. A lot of people show their stories and experiences about like wild times or how they created acts, what inspired act. Community is often worked towards and and fostered and held by individuals who want to see more uh, representation on stage or people who know the experiences of wanting to see more or, or be treated ethically and uplift their community members. And one incredible group of people is the Grant Avenue Follies. So they are a burlesque troupe made up of burlesque legends from the 50s and the 60s who came together in the 21st century to essentially uplift the the senior Asian burlesque community. They perform solos and group routines and they travel and they do workshops. They're on file. Uh, if you go to their website, you can check out a lot of the, the stuff that they do. If you like to cook food, again, No Bed of Roses does have recipes, but if you want to learn more about cooking food, another burlesque performer is Cooking with Calamity. During the pandemic, Calamity Chang ended up creating this really fun food cooking show uh, that people could just cook along with her and uh, she just talk, share stories, be funny. Highly recommend if you want to cook alongside a burlesque performer. Another burlesque performer who you can check out on YouTube who has just recently started uploading videos specifically about uh, cool Asian history. Viva L'Amour, they have a YouTube channel that I just discovered is starting to upload videos a little bit more. Something that's really cool to learn about secret histories. Really informative stuff. Uh, so I highly recommend you check them out as well. There's also a documentary which I am still on the fence about if it's actually being made because it was in the works for a little bit and then I, I haven't seen really much since the pandemic happened. It's called Women's World. A documentary talking about Asian burlesque history. Something to keep an eye out for because if it goes Trust me, I'm gonna promote it if it is coming out. <laughs> if you want to dress like a traveling show pony or one at home, get your merchandise from Traveling Show Goal, which is owned by Die Lovely. <laughs> Die Lovely owns Traveling Show Goal, which is a website that sells t-shirts, tank tops, luggage tags. They are mostly known for the Traveling Show Goal logos. However, they did release a couple during the pandemic, such as the one I'm wearing today. If you want to be fabulous or casual, but still feel the part of a burlesque performer, buy from them, support them. They have some really, really cool stuff that is very popular. And just following up again, because I apparently lost my notes and could not find the video to talk about it. I mentioned Viva L'Amour a couple of times in this video, and I also mentioned knowing who's who and making sure you're hiring burlesque performers of Asian descent. Whether that's performers from places like India, China, Japan, the Philippines, Singapore, the Pacific Islands, and if you are wondering who's out there, who are some of these magnificent performers? The Slasian Don't Rush Challenge was made by Viva L'Amour. There are three videos that feature a huge number of Asian burlesque performers. So I highly recommend that you check it out if you want to know who's out there and who is available for you to hire, support, keep an eye out for because we all do so, so much in this community and we are phenomenal. And that is my list. Those are some resources. There's a lot more. So make sure to keep doing your research, keep supporting us, keep hiring us. If you have more resources you want to add, please comment down below. With that, I look forward to seeing you next time.